Well, 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 the House Oversight Committee released a 19-page document today which shows a years-long money trail resulting over $20 million in payments. These are from various foreign entities to the Biden family during Biden's tenure as vice president, folks. The most damning revelations obviously involves a Russian oligarch transferring $3.5 million to a shell company affiliated with Hunter Biden and Devin Archer. A company was also used to facilitate other payments for a lot of other foreign entities, too. Uh, Democrats, the, the, the people who investigated Trump for Russian ties, that they couldn't find any, are downplaying the, the entire mess of this, insisting that there's no wrongdoing on behalf of the Biden family and using Trump indictments as this diversionary tactic. Well, joining me now, Joe DeGeneva, former U.S. attorney and Newsmax contributor, along with fellow Newsmax contributor and former senior Justice Department official Victoria Townsend. Okay, uh, Victoria, I'll go to you first on this one. I'm so, I'm like, I rate about this 3.5 million from like the mayor of Moscow's wife. Uh, for what? Uh, for a, a dinner two months later with Joe Biden at Cafe Milano. That's what it was for. Yeah. So, uh, Joe, that's okay. Totally fine. Give you three and a half million dollars to have a meeting with <laughs> Biden. Is there any legal mechanism, though? Because, look, you know, they wanted transcripts from if Trump went to go buy a pack of gum. So is there any legal mechanism to force the White House when Joe Biden was vice president to disclose the content or the people that were in that meeting? Well, yes, uh, if there were meetings in the White House, that can be done through an impeachment inquiry, because then Congress mm -hmm. has vast power to issue more subpoenas and has a greater power as a result of case law and longstanding recognized power in the House. The only way they're going to be able to get all the documents from the White House is through that. They can get the other documents from third parties like banks, brokerage houses, websites mm -hmm. with the power they have now. But to get the big documents from the White House and others, they're going to have to have an impeachment inquiry. Yeah, well, well, Victoria, take a look at this, though. This is a statement from the White House. This is not worth the paper it's printed on. But he writes in part, today, House Republicans on the Oversight Committee released another memo full of years old news, innuendo and misdirection, but notably missing yet again any connection to President Biden. Look, I'm sorry, I was born at night, just not last night. If that family took in $20 million, what product did they sell? Well, we have, we have no product whatsoever. But this, you know, Joe and I were around many years ago during the Clinton impeachment, and that was the Clinton Moses operandi, which was, oh, nothing to see here. We, that's an old story. We did this already. You've already printed Move on it. Move on.org. That's so, how it started. <laughs> so, I mean, this is the way the Democrats operate, and the mainstream media goes along with it. So what can you do? Yeah. Well, and and, and the, the group MoveOn.org was started in order to move on from the Clinton impeachments, and it's still... Right. You know, a, toting a hack today. But, uh, Joe, this it's being reported, though, from a Georgia prosecutor that Fannie Willis is expected to present her case to the grand jury next week, which could lead to a fourth indictment of this president. Isn't I mean, the timing is, of course, very convenient after the Comer's report. But every time the heat gets turned up on the Biden business deals, they call in another one of their lackeys and say, oh, we need another indictment or drop news about the indictment. Well, that's exactly what the Democrats are doing. They plan this very well from their perspective. They have a strategy, and that is to counterweight Trump every time something happens to the Bidens. The difference is they have the power of federal law enforcement on their side, and they can use the vast energy and power of the federal grand jury and abuse it in the process mm -hmm. to make political points. Uh, we are watching the slow demise of the administration of justice in our country because we have a corrupt attorney general, a corrupt FBI director. And sad to say, I'm really, really depressed about the state of the federal judiciary. This woman in Washington who got this case, Judge Chutkin, not even allowing the common courtesies or following the rules to allow Trump's people sufficient time to respond to her demands for a response to the special counsel's request for a protective order. Right. She is acting as if she's marauding all over the rights of Donald Trump and, and not a whimper yeah. from the American Bar Association or the great American press. Yeah, that, and, and, that, and, and go ahead. 
No, I was just going to say, Jack Smith is trying to, to kill with a thousand cuts. He's going around bringing motions, not only in Washington, D.C., but in Florida. But that judge seems to be on top of him and said, Paul, stop a minute. Tell me why you're using a grand jury in Washington, D.C. for a Florida case. Yeah, that's yep. Judge Cannon in Florida. Yeah. Well, and then the bigger problem, too, is they're going to force a hearing on Friday. They haven't. I mean, look, these people had three years to gather all their stuff via Jack Smith. And they're, they're giving Trump's people, what, like nine days? Not, not even that. I mean, the, so, some of the response times are, you know, less than a week. Uh, it's really what, what Judge Chutkin is doing in Washington is extremely unfair. Mm -hmm. But that's because she's made up her mind. She is running a railroad. And she's the conductor uh, and the engineer uh, combined yeah. into one. And she's got to railroad Trump. That's what this is about. And let's remind everybody that she was at the law firm with Hunter Biden. True. I mean, look. And that same law firm now represents Hunter Biden. I, it's, you know, it's the appearance <laughs> of impartiality. They don't even have that. Joe, Victoria, always a pleasure.